audio jungle. Have fun. If you mess up, laugh at yourself. Hey everybody, I can't believe we're already here at month 10. This is our final month for this particular project and um, I've sure had a great time. Um, I've enjoyed sharing my techniques and, and um, design possibilities with you all. I hope that you're uh, feeling like you're now a ruler master. So, and if not, hey, you just have to practice a little bit more. Remember, practice, persevere, play and you're just gonna keep on adding to your skill set. But um, it's been a great, great time. Uh, thank you again so much for sticking with me. And um, this month we've got um, kind of save the best for last. I have to say this might be my absolute favorite tool um, ever. It's Rose. Now I know it looks a little odd. If you saw this on the shelf, you'd probably think a garden tool or a weapon or something, who knows what you would think, but it's actually a feather tool designed to help you learn how to create feather designs in your quilting. And you're gonna be amazed at how cool this thing works. You're gonna love it. It is available in small, medium, and large, but the medium I find to be uh, the most versatile, so this is the one we're using for this particular project. So let's go ahead and dive in to the technique. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the technique first. Now, in talking about the technique and in describing what the um, overview of this design is, I want you to go ahead and bring back a practice piece again. So remember, always practice first before moving over to your actual quilt. Um, at this point, I've got a triple decker sandwich going on here. So um, lots of layers here. That's what I do so I don't have to make a full new complete sandwich. Just add the layers to it. Um, and what I want to do is just draw here for you what I'm going to refer to as a spine. Now that's going to be a gentle curve and that is kind of the foundation to build your plumes on, which are the kind of teardrop shapes that make up the feather design. So a gentle curve is going to work much better than an aggressive curve. So don't don't get too crazy with your curve because it'll be a lot harder to maintain the correct angle of the plume to the spine. So nice gentle curve, gonna be lots easier. Okay, so when you are quilting the spine, oddly enough, a gentle curve can be a little bit tricky to quilt. Um, you wanna speed up if you're doing something real gradual and open thinking about keeping with uh, fluid motion. So if you try to kind of micromanage that curve, you're gonna end up with a line that doesn't look quite as smooth as you'd like it to look. So think about speeding up um, to do that shape. You wanna quilt that spine so that you have something to refer to, um, or you can just simply mark it and use that as a reference. When you quilt um, the feathers, you want to always start from the bottom and work up. So the effect is gonna be stacked feathers. So they're gonna be stacked on top of one another and they're not separate from one another. So that's the effect that we're gonna go for here. Now we're gonna work up one side. And my logo okay, is always gonna be at the top. So think of that, always keep that logo at the top. And that way you know you're, you're correct. When you're working on uh, the right side, it doesn't matter which side you start on, but for, for this practice piece, we'll start on the right and we're gonna work up, back down, and then switch over to the left. Um, make sure that you can really see your spine really, really well, um, because that's gonna be very important. You're wanting to pay attention to that little etch line right there, little white line. Each of the plumes has the etch line. And that is what you're gonna hear me refer to as the etch line that is going to be held parallel to the spine. So I'm gonna talk about that quite a bit. So familiarize yourself with the etch line one and the spine two so that you know what, exactly what I'm referring to. Now I like to start larger, kind of at the bottom here, and then work my way up to the smaller size plumes. Now, the only thing you're really going to need to concern yourself with here is that the 
etch line is parallel to the spine line here. So let's kind of accentuate that line like so, so you can see it. And then I'm gonna get a closer uh, angle here for you. Okay, now we've got a um, narrower uh, view here so that you can really see what I'm talking about. Etch line, spine line. Exaggerate that a little bit so you can really see, okay. Now I'm gonna be building my plumes along the right side of the spine. So my etch line here needs to be parallel to the spine and then about a quarter of an inch on the opposite side. So if this is the right side that I'm building my feather plumes, then the etch line needs to be on the opposite side. So it needs to be about a quarter of an inch away from the spine. So as your spine kind of curves, then you'll be rotating your ruler to maintain the parallel angle. Very easy. You might have to practice it a couple of times before you move on to your actual quilt so that you understand the concept and how it works. It's really once you get the idea of keeping that etch line parallel with the, with the spine, then it's all really easy. Okay, so once we've got it positioned how we want, we're gonna lower our foot and make sure that you have your gripping aids attached to the bottom of the tool. Lean up against the lower edge of the tool here like so. And then nice, easy grip on the tool. Now we're just gonna lean on all the edges as we come to them and make the teardrop shape. Okay. Now, once we get into the spine, we touch the spine a little bit here. Now we're not gonna move the ruler, but instead we're just gonna travel out. Now, we wanna travel out if we're gonna be repeating the very same shape, so we're repeating the larger shape, we're gonna travel out, if this is one or a zero, and this is 100% of the way out, we wanna travel about between about 70 and 80% of the way out. And this is something that you'll really easily um, learn with just a little bit of practice. So don't worry about you don't need to mark or anything. It's just kind of keeping that in mind, approximately 80% of the way back out. And then leave your needle down and simply slide the ruler up, leaning this lower edge against the edge of your foot. And then you're gonna kind of bend down a little bit so that you can look to see that you're still parallel to the spine line. And then you're gonna lean on the edge of the tool Pick up the pace a little bit, because it's a bigger design. Hit the spine and travel back out about 80% of the way. Slide the ruler up, leaning against the edge of the foot. And then rotate the ruler. As the spine curves around, you rotate the ruler so that you're maintaining that parallel angle about a quarter of an inch away from the spine. Nice, easy grip on the tool. And then just travel back out. Now here I'm gonna travel out about 50% of the way because I'm gonna swap the larger plume for the smaller plume. So I wanna travel less and then just get rid of the larger plume, swap it out for the medium sized plume and then just lean it up against the edge and rotate so that you're maintaining that parallel angle there. Replace your gripping aids um, so that you're all set to guide the ruler. And then now if I wanna keep with the same shape, I'm gonna continue traveling 80% of the way. When you're keeping with the same shape, or size rather, you're gonna want to travel that 80% of the way. Okay, now. We're gonna go ahead and extend our spine a little bit here because we're gonna do one more plume. And then we're gonna add our cap. Okay. Now, back to the spine here. What I wanna do to add the, the cap, which is kind of what finishes the feather, so that's sort of the tip of the feather, is I'm gonna rotate my ruler around like so, so that it's kind of pointing in the direction that I want it to be ending. 
And then I'm just gonna now follow along the edge. Now, what you wanna think about here, if you wanna add a little extra detail, is where the curve kind of transitions here, so where it's kind of going out and then in, right where that transition happens, you can just kind of veer away from the edge of the ruler and kind of curl it in and then travel back out. And then when you travel back out, you're just gonna close it. Go back to the spine, okay? That closes it. Now, what we're gonna do to maintain the same single stitch is we're gonna travel right on back down the line here. Now, if you find you need a little hand or a little something to lean on, you can always use that gentle curve provided by the outside edge of the rose tool. So, I like to do that because as I said, Sometimes the gentle curves can be the trickiest to quilt. And then with this, you can see that I'm using my right hand here off to the side to help kind of guide the fabric through. Okay. Now I'm gonna just veer off the edge of the ruler here to close the spine and complete it. And next, what we're gonna do is we're going to just take the ruler and simply flip it over Okay, so now we're working on the reverse side. My logo is still at the top, so we can look at that. And then we're gonna do the exact same technique, only we're working up the opposite side, which means that our etch line needs to be parallel and on the opposite side now. So working up the left side, the etch line needs to be on the right side of the spine. So bring it up until it touches. So edge of your foot should touch the lower edge of that plume shape. And then it can be a little bit off the edge, a little bit like that. And then I'm just gonna rotate it until I can see that those lines are parallel. Now some of the shapes, um, it's gonna be some of the, when you're at the bottom edge, it might be a little bit trickier to see that line. So you might have to kind of quilt out a little bit until you can see, and then make sure that you're parallel. This is also a really good way to Train yourself what a feather feels like to quilt. Travel out that 80% of the way. If you feel like you're getting a little slipping, then just add more gripping aids. So here I only had one, and you can see that I um, am not as precise on my back track. So I'm just gonna grab another little piece of shelf liner. The more the merrier, remember you, you absolutely cannot have enough of these. It will just make your life so much easier. The more you add, the easier it moves your fabric. All right, so there we go. And you'll notice that as I'm working up the design, they when I pick up the ruler, they tend to just kind of come right along with me. So slide it up, look at the angle again, keep the etch line parallel to the spine line, and then um, you can see this oval here provides me with a little bit more um, stability. Travel out 80% of the way, slide the ruler up, rotate it. Now this next one, I'm only gonna do the 50% of the way because I wanna do the smaller shape. Okay, so I pick up the pace a little bit when I'm doing the larger shapes. All right, now this, I'm just gonna end up um, closing off the feather here. Cause you can see, I'm just gonna fall right into the cap of the feather. If I feel like I'm gonna get a little overlap here, I might just kind of slowly follow along the edge of the feather plume and then meet up with the ruler, bring it around, and just kind of die right into that cap like so. Take a few small locking stitches, and then you have an amazing feather. That's the technique overview. Now we're gonna to go to our quilt. If you need to practice this three or four times, go ahead. Um, just keep on adding a new uh, piece of fabric over your sandwich and then you'll be all comfortable and ready to go. Okay, now we've got our practice in place and we're ready to move on to our actual quilt project. So last month we laid in kind of the foundation for our feathers. So we did a decorative spine with the June Small Ruler. Um, technique is gonna be basically the same you might find that the lines have begun to kind of vanish a little bit where you've drawn the spine initially. 
So if you find that that's happened, go ahead and kind of retouch those lines a little bit so that you can see where that center is for your spine. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that so that you can see where I'm working. So just kind of redefine that line. Because anytime you have a decorative spine, you, the technique is still basically the same. You just need to have that center line that you're following in order to keep the etch line of the ruler parallel to the spine line. So you wanna make sure that you have a very clear line there um, to follow. All right, and again, we're just gonna start on one side. I'll start on the right, but it doesn't matter which side you start. Remember, logo always needs to be up. Lots of gripping aids, just bring in the gripping aids. That makes everything easier. I like to start with the larger plume, but um, the tool is really a freestyle tool. So you don't need to be concerned with there being any particular order here, though I think that it tends to look good when you have the larger um, design elements towards the bottom because they carry a little bit more weight being larger. All right, so drop your foot. Um, position your ruler so that the etch line here is parallel to the spine that you've drawn. Make sure it's um, lined up correctly before you start quilting. And then once you can ensure that you're lined up correctly, time to start quilting. Take a few small stitches back just to kind of lock them in place. Now on this, I want to show you a little detail that you can add if you're feeling really good about using your free motion quilting uh, and you want to travel out of the feather plume to that new starting point. So if you remember from our practicing, we did 80% of the way if we're repeating the same size. So I'm going to just simply slide the ruler up a little bit, then use the tool um, as a hoop. So kind of a, a little um, option here for you is to add the little scallops. So those are just little free motion scallops. Okay, and I'm just traveling from stopping point to the new starting point. Now I'm going to slide the ruler up, rotate so that I can ensure that my angle here is parallel, so etch line parallel to spine line. Needs to be about a quarter of an inch on the opposite side. And then do your next plume. Move your finger out of the way so you don't run yourself over. Slide the ruler up, do your little scalloping. Slide the ruler up. Rotate till you keep your angle uh, parallel. And then you're just gonna keep on working all the way up the one side, and then I'll show you how we do the second side.
Okay, so we finished the first side. Now we're gonna do, you can do the same thing with the left side of the wave if you want to, or you can just do um, the feathers all at one time. So either do um, side one on both and then switch over to side two on both or just do um, one feather at a time. It doesn't really matter. But now what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take the feather tool and just simply flip it, okay? Logo at the top again. So take that feather tool and just flip it. So now I'm working um, with the flip side of it, like so. And it doesn't matter one bit if the feather plumes line up side to side, doesn't matter. And you're gonna find that wherever you end up is exactly where you need to be. So it doesn't, you don't have to measure out how far you're going or anything like that. You're gonna end up right where you need to be and you're just going to let that design stop right when you get to um, the circle or, or if you're off the edge of the quilt, just let it fall off the edge of the quilt and then um, kind of seal it up with your binding and it looks really cool. I like that look where um, the quilting designs just kind of fall off the edge of the quilt. I think it looks really fun. So that's what we're doing here. Okay, so we don't care about where it's, where it is in relation to the first side, but what we do care about is the angle of the etch line. So now that we're working on the opposite side, the left side, we're gonna keep our etch line parallel and at least a quarter of an inch away on the right side of the spine. So there's my spine. My, and I've just kind of redrawn it a little bit so that you can see it. Um, because I was showing you something a little bit, a little bit uh, enhanced in our spine there. Take a few small locking stitches, lock your threads in place, move your thread tail out of the way, and just go ahead and quilt in until you touch the shape that you made on the spine. So you're just gonna go to that shape, which we used a football shape here. Then you can either slide the uh, feather tool out of the way and do a little bit of free motion quilting. 80% out of the way if you're using the same size plume. If you wanna go to a smaller plume shape, then you're gonna go about 50% of the way. So travel less because you're bringing in a smaller shape. And it's entirely up to you. If you decide you want to take up more of your negative space with the larger plumes, you can use just the larger plumes. But if you want that kind of tapered effect, then go ahead and switch it out. You can also do go to the larger plume, then to the smaller plume, then back to the larger plume, and just vary the distance that you're traveling. So just come right into the spine here, and then you can either uh, move your tool out of the way to do the little scallops, or keep your feather tool in place and just lean back on the edge. Keep sliding it up, rotating it so that it stays parallel. So, another thing you could do if you want to add a little interesting design element is to take and slide the feather tool up a little bit. Now we're going to reverse the order that we're leaning. So instead of working from the bottom edge around, we're going to do a little detail here, leaning on the upper edge like so. And then we'll just kind of curl it around, overlap a little bit, okay? Think of it as a little cinnamon roll almost. Okay, and then just travel right back out until you're at about the spot that you would have ended if you were doing the traditional plume. About that 80% of the way out. Slide it up, rotate it, keep the etch line parallel to the spine line, and then lean on the edge of the tool. Have fun with it. I think these feathers are really, really fun to do. It's just the, the motion of the shape is almost therapeutic. So enjoy it, have fun. You're gonna love the result you're getting. You're gonna finally be able to um, understand exactly how those plumes uh, meet up with the spine. I've taught so many people how to do feathers, um, both with the ruler and without, and I find that that's tends to be the biggest challenge is where um, that angle should be, what it should look like. A lot of times you might see people um, 
making feathers and when they feel most uncomfortable with them is when they tend to look like, uh, I almost think they look like Mickey Mouse claws or gloves. So they look a little weird when the angle doesn't meet up with the spine in the correct way. So this is just a way to really um, train yourself what you're looking for um, with the angle of that, that plume. And we all love feathers, so have fun feathering uh, these wavy lines and uh, we'll move on to the next section uh, when you're done feathering your little uh, decorative spines. Okay, now we're gonna be working on section seven, so block seven. Um, we did a little bit of Daisy May, so we added a, a petal shape in the triangles of the block that you can see here. Mm -hmm, right there, if you didn't add them yet, you can add them right now. If you want um, a rounded Daisy May petal instead of a pointed Daisy May petal, go for it. So we've got the, the four triangles done with the Daisy May. Now we're gonna go in and we're gonna add a little, um, that feather shape, that plume shape. But I am gonna go ahead and give myself some registration lines using a ruler. I'm just gonna work from um, corner to corner. So uh, vertically, horizontally, and then diagonally. And that's just gonna give me a nice little registration line there to follow. So we got vertical, now we're gonna rotate the ruler so we can get horizontal. And you can see that I'm just going right on through the center of the block as well. And that's gonna help me for that little center design I wanna add there. Corner to corner, and corner to corner again. I like having symmetrical lines to follow. Just, it helps the process. It simplifies the process for you. And I think you'll really like the result that you get. Now, we're gonna, gonna um, use that line that we've drawn in the corner there of the triangle as our registration line to follow for our angle placement here. For, so pretending like that is our spine. Okay, so we just hold and position. I'm using the medium size plume here, but you can go with the smaller size plume. The larger plume isn't really gonna fit in that space, so you wanna kinda stay away from that one here. Um, and then just kind of position it just so. Now here, I'm just gonna kind of eyeball that the space from this stitch line is about the same as it is from this stitch line, that negative space. And then my uh, etch line's a quarter of an inch to the opposite side of that registration line I've drawn. Now for this one, I'm actually going to start right here at the bottom of the Daisy May petal. And I'm just gonna kind of venture up over until I meet up with the, ret, the ruler tool. And then I'm gonna complete the plume. Now, I can stop here if I want it to fall into the Daisy May shape and I could lock my thread. Or if I wanna kind of overlap it a little bit, I can just do a little overlap like that. And that makes it so that I don't have um, cutting as, as many, I'm not cutting as many threads as I would if I wanted to stop. So then what I'm gonna do here is just flip the ruler now. Okay, now I'm working on the opposite side and I'm gonna do that same thing. Rotate it, bring it up, ensure that the etch line is now on the opposite side of my registration line I've drawn. And then do that same thing, which is to kind of eyeball that space to see that it's um, equal, equal space top and bottom. All right, and then we're gonna freehand, freehand, freehand until we meet up with the tool. Okay. And then overlap if you want to. And then you have that fun little, little design there. Now if you wanna have a little bit of fun with free motion quilting, you can bring in the gripping aids again and just add a little curly cue. I think you're gonna find that it's easier now because you've been doing that shape with the ruler. Think of that as your training wheels. So then do a little curly cue the other way. Doesn't matter if they're perfectly symmetrical. And then come back to the center and then um, just go ahead and lock your stitch. 
you're gonna notice that mine are not absolutely perfectly symmetrical and that's what gives it its charm. And if that's not the truth, then it ought to be. So now we're going to move to the center portion here. And we're gonna do that same little kind of shape, only we're gonna actually curly cue it each time. We're gonna come back to the center each time. All right, so do a few locking stitches in the center. And then we want this to be like so. Now, what we're gonna think about here is I want this registration line to now be right on this line that I've marked. And then as I rotate around, I'm gonna keep um, placing it on the line. So this is gonna be a different effect. Same ruler, same tool, different result. Um, always be thinking of different things that you can do with a tool. You don't wanna buy a ruler just to do one thing with it. You wanna buy a ruler so that you can do many different things with it. And this is another option for you. So align now the etch line directly on the line that I've drawn to create those sections. And I'm gonna lean against the tool. When my curve starts to shift, I just curl it in like so, and then travel back out, meeting back up with the ruler, and then come right on back to the center. Rotate the tool like so. You might have to kind of lean in so that you can see um, that you're on the spine line. And then you're gonna do this, this next side. Same thing, when the curve transitions, you just veer away from it and then go right back over it and then meet back up with the tool. Back around to the center, rotate the ruler again and then you're just gonna keep on aligning that etch line to the line. Now you can do four. If you wanna do more, then you'll go around a second time aligning the etch line to this line. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kinda show you how to, what it looks like to do the four, then to do those um, extra shapes in there to get more overlap. So um, that's our section that we're doing. And if you like this design and you wanna opt for this type of design in your little um, three inch square that you have in the lower left corner of your quilt. This be another place you could repeat that or um, you can use any of the other rulers to fill in some of those spaces. So now at this point, because we're kind of at the end of our project, you'll be able to lay your quilt um, back a little bit and see are there areas where I'd like to add a little bit more quilting or am I just completely not done with the project yet because I'm having so much fun with it. That's probably what's gonna happen. And if it does, um, I wanna just make sure that you have some really great ideas. And this is gonna be one of them. I bet you're amazed at how easy feathers are now. Um, I know I'm always impressed by how quick people take to this technique and how clear it becomes of what that angle of your plume should look like um, in relation to the spine. So hopefully a lot of light bulb moments have gone on through this month and uh, this lesson. And again, thank you so much for joining me for uh, the Ruler Mastery Series. I've, I've really enjoyed working with you and um, sharing this information with you. And I hope that you'll stay in touch, 
follow me on Instagram, um, add me as a friend on Facebook if we're not already friends because we do want to stay in touch and I do really care about what you're doing and what you're, what you're creating. Share your quilty designs with me and um, love to stay in touch with all of you. Thank you again.